Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson and welcome to the next video in your Calculus 2 video set. Today we're going to be talking about section 9.2 which covers direction fields and Euler's method. And so that's what we're going to cover with. We're going to talk about how to work with differential equations graphically using the idea of direction fields and then how to deal with them numerically using numerical methods such as Euler's method. Now specifically in this video we're going to focus on the graphical approach using direction fields. So what are our goals when talking about direction fields? Well, first we want to be able to generate the fields, both by hand and then more efficiently with Mathematica. Then we want to be able to use these direction fields to sketch and approximate solutions, identify autonomous differential equations and equilibrium solutions, and then use these to make decisions about the long-term behavior of our solutions. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what are direction fields? They are a visual representation of the differential equation. So consider this differential equation, dy dx equals x. So in general, the solution to this differential equation could be y equals some curve plus some constant as a family of curves. Now, if I knew what the curve was, I could go ahead and plot it and say, oh, there's one example of my curve. The problem is I don't necessarily know what that solution is yet. But I do know a lot of information about how the solution curve will behave. For instance, if I looked at any specific point, right here, for instance, let's say that's the point negative 1, 5. If I want to know what direction the curve was traveling at that point, at some instant, what I would do is calculate the derivative. Now, it would give me the slope of the tangent line. So I would take the derivative of my solution, and I would evaluate it at that point. But I don't need the actual solution to find the slope of the tangent line because I have that expressed in differential equation. The slope of the tangent line at this specific point is just whatever the x-coordinate is. That's what my differential equation is actually telling me. So what I need to do is calculate the slope of the tangent lines at a sample of points in my plane here. And then I will draw little representations, little segments of those tangent lines all over the plane, and then I will interpret the results. So that's what I'm going to do here. So let me clear this plot real quick. And then to organize our work, I'm going to build myself a little bit of a table. And my table is going to have the, the points that I'm going to sample at. So these are going to be my x and y values of some points in the plane. And then the other column is going to be the slope of the tangent line at that specific point. So the slope of the tangent line, that's the derivative evaluated at that point. And for my differential equation, that's going to be represented with x. So let's grab our first point. Let's look at the origin, 0, 0. So when I take x equals 0 and y equals 0 and plug them into my differential equation to the right-hand side, I get a slope of 0. And so a little segment of that tangent line would look like this. It's a little segment of a horizontal tangent line. And then real quick, I'm going to check another point. I'm going to check a point... It's going to be 0, 1. I'm going to write it there for a particular reason. That point is up here at 0, 1. And all I've really done is change the y value of that point. But in this very special case, specific case, my differential equation is just a function of x, not a function of, of y. So in this specific case, changing the y coordinate is actually not going to affect my slope. So at 0, 0, my slope is 0. At 0, 1, my slope is 0. At 0, 2 will be 0, so on and so forth. So that will actually just save me a little bit of time as I hand construct this direction field. I know this slope will be 0, and so will all of these slopes if I'm just changing the y value down here as well. So that will save me a little bit of time. Now let's change the x value here. Let's try the point 1, 0, for instance. While plugging in x equals 0 and y equals 0, I get a slope of 1. And so if I go over here to that point, I'm going to draw a slope of 1. See, to draw that slope, I'm going to go think of rise over run. I'm going to go over 1 and then up 1. So I see my graph is a little out of proportion, but this on this graph will represent a slope of 1. And now that I realize that I can change the y coordinate without really changing the slope, I'm just going to quickly sketch all of those slopes that I would get at those points. We're going to move on to 2, 0. Here, when I plug in these points, I'm going to get a slope of 2. I'll go over to 2, 0, over 1, up 2 now. So that's when my, the direction of my tangent line will be traveling. So it's a little bit steeper. And I'll go and draw that a little bit steeper here. All these points. 
go over to 3, 0, slope of 3. That's going to be even steeper still. Maybe I'll exaggerate this a little bit. I have all my slopes like that. Uh, let's check some in the left side of the y axis. How about negative 1, 0? Here the slope would be negative 1, so if I went to this point, it would be over 1, down 1, so that would be a little segment of that tangent line. So I can draw all those slopes. Negative 2, 0 equals negative 2, so a little bit steeper here as well, pointing down. And so this is how I'm basically hand constructing my direction field. I am manually calculating the slope of the tangent line at all the various points, and then I am plotting those values. And it's a little bit of a tedious process here. But now how do we actually interpret this uh, direction field, interpret our results? Well, the idea is this. I'm going to grab this point right here. This looks to be the point negative 1, maybe 3, for instance. So I have a little segment of the tangent line, and the tangent line is essentially pointing me in the direction the solution would be traveling if it went through this point. So at this moment, it is traveling, it is traveling in this direction. So I'm just going to follow it for a little bit. And then I get to about here. Well, here I know my tangent line is horizontal, so I better change directions. If my solution got to here, it would now be traveling horizontally. But if it got to here, it would now be traveling this direction. So what I'm basically doing is following all these little directions from the slope lines, the direction lines. And that allows me to kind of sketch out a representation for how my solution curve would actually be going. And I could do that starting at any point. So this would be one potential solution curve. If I started up here instead and follow those flow lines, just kind of sketching out how I'm following those flow lines, I could get another solution curve. If I start a little lower, somewhere down here, for instance, I would do the same thing. I would just follow those fl flow lines and sketch out a potential another solution. And so what I can see here is this direction field is really a visual represent representation of the entire family of solutions. And now in this specific case, because I'm working with a relatively easy differential equation, I can actually calculate the solution. In this case, because my right-hand side is just a function of x, I could just integrate both sides of this thing to get x squared over 2. And that would actually be my family of solutions. Um, and in looking at this, I can see that my family of solutions is a set of parabolas. And I can really, once again, see that in my direction field as well. I can see all of these parabolas. So without knowing the solution in a more complex case, we can see that I could just manually create this direction field and then follow the flow lines to sketch my solutions. Now, hopefully, one thing we can see is this does not look like fun. Right? This looks like a tedious process of drawing and calculating all these tangent values, slope of the tangent line values, and all these points. This is not something in general we want to do by hand. So we'd much rather use a tool like Mathematica to generate these direction fields for us. So how will we do this in Mathematica? Well, Mathematica has a command called vector plot. Vector plot. And it plots vectors at the different points along the plane. And so I need to put in my first argument to this command will be the actual vector. And Mathematica will use curly brackets to represent vectors. And a vector in general, I can write as some change of x value and some change of y value. So for instance, if I have this vector starting at the point 2, comma 0 right here, and I want to draw, draw a vector that went over 1 and up to this vector, for instance, well, that vector would go over 1 and up 2. So that vector, the first component is the change of x, and the second component is the change of y. Now, how do I represent all of these vectors in space? Well, to draw these vectors, I was basically going over 1 and up whatever the slope value was. In this case, I went over 1, up 2, because the slope was 2 there. More generally, I could go over 1 and then put the formula for my slope as the second component. In this case, because my differential equation is dy dx equals x, the slope at all the different points will be whatever that x coordinate is. So now I can really use this in my vector plot command. I can say over 1, up whatever that slope value is. And then I'll have two more arguments that will just be the range of the x and y values that I want to use and my visualization. All right, let's open Mathematica and actually take a look at this. So here's my command vector plot. It's going to take three arguments. The first is going to be the vector representation. And like I said, I'm going to go over 1 
end up whatever the right-hand side of my differential equation was. And that could contain x's and y's and all kinds of different things here. In our case, it was just x. The next argument will be the range of x values, basically the viewing window for my plot. Let's use a range of x from, looks like negative 3 to 3 is what we used in our picture. And then our picture looks like we used a range of y values that was negative 3 to 8, I believe. All right, so we put these in and we run this and I get this plot that contains a bunch of vectors. Now there is a pretty important difference in here. Mathematica is really drawing vectors at all these locations, so it's drawing little arrows. I really don't want that. I really don't want that, that uh, representation here because I'm drawing little segments of tangent lines which aren't necessarily directional. The other issue is that some of my vectors are very small and some of them are very long because Mathematica is drawing a very specific vector at each point and that vector will have not just a direction but also a length. I kind of like to avoid both of these issues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an option to my command. This option is going to be called Vector Scale. And Vector Scale is going to take in a list of values. And it's going to take in three values. So I'm going to put in 0 0.04, 0 0.04, and none. Now what exactly do these things mean? Now when I run this, first of all, you'll see, oh, okay, now I get my nice kind of clean direction field diagram. So I'm getting the result I want. Now what are these weird values I'm putting in here? Well you can really find out what they are by playing with them a little bit. So for instance, you know, why did I use 0 0.04? Because it gave me a nice result. Because probably the first time I ran this I tried 0.4 and said, oh wait a second, that first argument is controlling the length, the unit length of the vectors. And this 0.4 was way too long. But 0 0.04 tends to give me a nice result. Now what about the next value here? Well, if we change that to 0.4, we can see a little bit of difference. What it, that is doing is that's controlling the arrow size of my vectors. So 0.4 actually isn't too bad, but if I left that before, I have you know absolutely huge arrowheads, and I don't want that. So I just put in 0.04 because I basically don't want to see my arrowheads at all. And that's very small. And the last one is a scaling function for how I want to scale the different vectors. But in my case, I don't want them to scale. I want them all to be the same size. And so by putting none here, it says do not scale them, make them all unit length. So now I run that, and now I can generate this beautiful direction field, and I don't have to do this by hand. And I can easily explore other differential equations to see what their fields will look like just by changing this value. So for instance, if my differential equation was dy dx equals x plus y, all I would have to do is add a plus y in this piece and rerun that, and now I've generated a new direction field for that differential equation. Okay, so now we've kind of seen how to generate our direction fields. How are we actually going to use them? So here we have an example problem. A population of rabbits can be modeled by the differential equation dp dt is equal to 1 fourth p times the quantity 5 minus p, where p of t is the number of rabbits, counted in hundreds, and this is the vertical axis of our plot. And t is the number of years into the future, and t will be the horizontal axis of our plot. And then we're given some other information that in 2010, there were 200 rabbits. So the idea is the solutions to our differential equation can be seen here in this direction field. And I use Mathematica to generate this direction field so we didn't have to do it by hand. Um, but we can kind of test some values just to make sure that it lines up. For instance, if I looked at the point that was, well, t equals 0 and p equals 1, for instance, that would be right here. Well, if I plug those values into my differential equation to find the slope, I should get 1 fourth times 1 times 5 minus 1. So I should get a slope value of 1. And so right there I can see that, yes, my slope is about 1 at that point. So that seems to line up. I notice if I were doing this by hand, that would have a little bit of a shortcut to generate the whole direction field. What I notice is that I have a slope of 1 at that point, but also all of these other points also have a slope of 1. In fact, along any horizontal line, it does not look like my slopes are changing. And the reason for that is because this is a very special differential equation. I don't have any t's in the right-hand side of my differential equation. Therefore, my slope does not depend on the independent variable t. Now this is a differential equation called an autonomous differential equation. There are a special group of differential equations, so we want to make sure we know how to identify them. So visually I can see that the slope's not changing along any horizontal line. Algebraically I can see that, but there's no independent variable, there's no t's on the right-hand side. And as a formal definition, we have a differential equation of the form dy dx equals f of y 
is autonomous. So that's f of y, not f of x comma y. All right, so we've kind of confirmed that this is the correct directional field and everything looks right. Now let's see how we can use it to talk about this population of rabbits. We are given the information that in 2010 there were 200 rabbits. So if we let t equal 0 be the year 2010, then I can express my initial condition as the population in 2010, t equals 0 years, um, we would have 2 counting in hundreds, rabbits. And so that would correlate with the point t equals 0, p equals 2. So I'd be right here. And so that identifies one specific solution out of this family of solutions. And what does that solution actually look like? Well, to find that solution, I can actually follow my flow lines and sketch out what that solution would look like. And it looks like it would look something like this. And so now that I've sketched that curve, I can really talk about what the population might be or would approximately be in later years. For instance, P of 1 would be approximately, well, at time equals 1 here, I can just follow that up to my new curve. Right about there, that looks a little better, bigger than 3, maybe about 3.25, so I might have about 325 rabbits. What about P of 2? I might approximate that value to be, let's see, if I come up here, maybe a little bit bigger than 4, so a 4.1-ish, somewhere in that neighborhood, so I have around 410 rabbits. So I can really use the direction field to sketch out a solution curve and find specific values of this population. I can also look at long-term trends. I see a very special solution. Um, in this family. This one that I've sketched, well that's some function, p of t, but I really don't know what that function is exactly. But if I look at what happens if I go up to the point maybe 0, 0,5 up here, if I plug in that point into my differential equation, I will get a slope of 0. And so my sketching that solution curve, I'm just going to get a horizontal line. Now because that's just a horizontal line, I actually know what the equation of that solution curve is. That solution curve is just p equals 5. In fact, I see another horizontal solution curve down here, which I could also sketch that solution curve. And once again, because it's horizontal, I know that curve is p equals 0. So these are actually two specific solutions. And they're special solutions because they are just these horizontal lines, and I can just pull out their values and see what those curves are. And so we call these values, these solutions, equilibrium solutions. And the formal definition here is that a solution of the form, y equals a, for some constant a, is an equilibrium solution. So here I have two equilibrium solutions, p equals 0 and p equals 5. Now I can see those visually on my graph, but I can also calculate those analytically by looking at the right-hand side of my differential equation. If I set that equal to 0 and solve for p, that will get me my two equilibrium solutions. I'm basically calculating when the slope would be equal to 0. All right, these equilibrium solutions are important, not because we know specifically two solutions, but they also divide our plane. I can't have any solution that crosses through my equilibrium solution, because that would imply that at some point I would have two different directions going on. So this acts as upper bound to the earlier solution that I've drawn. So that means that when I have my initial condition p of 0 equals 2, my initial population of rabbits, I can see that the population will continue to increase. For any value of p that I put in between 0 and 5, I get a positive value for the slope, so my solution curve will always be increasing. But because I have this equilibrium solution above my solution curve, I see it will never get bigger than p equals 5. And so I know that as time goes on, as time tends to infinity, my population will tend to 5. Writing that maybe a little more formally, p of t is my solution curve. It looks like the limit as t goes to infinity of that solution is going to equal 5, and 5 is really the carrying capacity of this population. So we can kind of see the value of finding these equilibrium solutions. All right, so in conclusion, we've learned how to hand draw a direction field. We've learned how to generate them in Mathematica. We've learned how to use those to approximate and sketch out solution curves and also talk about autonomous differential equations, equilibrium solutions, and this idea of long-term behavior, what happens as time goes to infinity. All right, that concludes this video. Thanks for your time.